I've been making book videos for 10 years now, which means I've grown a rather large physical TBR. Recently, I went through a bookshelf purge and only kept the books that I'm the most excited to read. I am convinced that my next favorite book is waiting for me somewhere on my shelves. I've set myself a challenge to read my entire physical TBR in one year. We are starting with 250 books, and by the end, I hope to be down to zero. Hey friends, welcome to episode two of TBR Tackle, my series where I am trying to read my entire physical TBR in one year. If you missed episode one, I will link it down below and you can get caught up to where we are now. We finished off the last episode with 245 books left on my physical TBR. And in this episode, we are gonna be checking off many more, as many as I can. Some of these episodes are going to have themes where I am choosing my TBR and other ones, I'm just gonna read whatever I want. And I think that this is going to be a whatever I want video. I'm thinking that I'm kind of in the mood for like summery books. What is a summer book? I don't really know. I'm just going to go on vibes, whatever I'm feeling in the moment. One book that I for sure know I will be reading is Road to Ruin by Hannah Lee because this is my book club book for Patreon. But I do feel like this fits in with a summer vibe because it is like a fantasy Mad Max type of story that takes place in like an apocalyptic desert. So I do feel like that is summer. Another book that I'm thinking about is Dial A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Sutanto. This is on my like top books that I want to read this year and it's like a cozy murder mystery like silly fun vibe. I feel like that'll be a good one. Other than this I think I'm just gonna like go off of what I'm feeling in the moment. I will also be spinning my sequels wheel, which has all of the current series that I'm in the middle of and the next book in that series that I have to read. The very top shelf up here of my TBR shelf are all of those sequels. But before I start reading, we need to do a little bit of a check-in with what I've read from the shelf outside of these videos. I read seven books from the TBR shelf in other vlogs. The first three I read in my vlog where I had no screens for a whole day. I didn't look at my phone, my laptop, I didn't watch TV, I just read. So I read Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee, Shades of Milk and Honey by Mary Robinette Kowal, and The Honey Witch by Sydney J. Shields. And then I also participated in Summerween and I did two Summerween vlogs where I read a ton of books and four of them were from the TBR shelf. So we had Dusk or Dark or Dawn or Day by Shauna McGuire, Alice by Christina Henry, Mary by Nat Cassidy, and We Sold Our Souls by Grady Hendrix. That is seven more books that I'm going to add over to my red shelf so we can keep track of how many books I am working my way through. And that brings my current total to 238. So we are starting this video with 238 books left on my physical TBR. I have started Dial A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Sutancho. I've heard that this is just a very cute, silly murder mystery, or I don't even know if it's a murder mystery. <laughs> Basically what happens is the main character is set up on a blind date and he's a terrible guy. In defending herself, she accidentally kills him and then freaks out and like doesn't know what to do with the body and ends up seeking the help of her mom and her aunties. They're all like covering up the murder and it's supposed to be just like very like cheeky and silly. And I'm really hoping that this is giving me Finlay Donovan vibes because I have quit that series because I hated the third book and I've been looking for something that's like comparable. So I'm hoping that this is that. I have read like half of Dial A for Aunties and it is very, very fun so far. A big part of the plot that I didn't mention is that the main character and all of her aunties work in the wedding industry. They all kind of do different things. The main character is a photographer. One of them is like the cake baker. Another one does makeup. Like they all kind of come together to give all of these wedding services. And the weekend that this murder happens and they're trying to get rid of this body is a very big wedding at this like super fancy hotel on this island. They're carting around this dead body in their freezer so they're just like <laughs> it's just so funny because they're like trying to get rid of it but they're on this island with people everywhere and so they're just like carrying this huge like freezer all around with them with a dead body in it it's so funny the aunties are hilarious another part of the plot is that the owner of the hotel is the main character's ex-boyfriend who was like the one that got away and so they're kind of like rekindling things but it also makes it more like they can't get caught because like he owns the hotel it's just very funny it's very silly like you really have to suspend your disbelief because none of it is things that would really happen <laughs> you know like it's just very 
silly and ridiculous and over the top but it's meant to be that way and so I'm enjoying it I could see this being like a really funny like comedy movie or like comedy series like um only murders in the building just something kind of like very over the top and like goofy but it's definitely what I was in the mood for right now just something very easy to read very like comforting even though it's like about murder and them cover covering up this murder it's very funny it's just funny because nobody in the book reacts to anything seriously nobody takes anything seriously so then as a reader I'm like okay well then I'm not gonna take anything seriously and I'm just gonna have a fun good time this was so good I just finished it I really enjoyed it I think I'm gonna give it four stars because it's not my absolute favorite but for what it was just like a very quick fun silly book I really enjoyed it I loved all the aunties I really liked the main character the one thing I will say is that there is a romance in here that I actually was like very interested in I really liked them together I would have wished that it had been a little bit more like fleshed out a bit in the first part we got like flashbacks of her and her ex-boyfriend when they were together and then like how their relationship ended and I actually kind of just wanted more of that because I did really really like them but obviously like this is in a romance book and the romance isn't like the central part of the story but I just enjoyed that part a lot so I kind of wished we got a little bit more of it this is a series I think following all the same characters I don't know how invested I am like I don't know if I'm gonna continue the series however I for sure will read her other book um Something about Vera Wong. Because I remember when that came out, it was on like so many people's favorites lists. So I'm definitely going to read that one. But let me know if I should continue this series. If the other books are worth it. Because I did really enjoy this. I just don't know that I'm like, oh, I need to continue the series. did start Road to Ruin. The vibe so far, so good. Definitely like Mad Max, desert, motorcycles, all of that imagery, but like add magic into it. I feel like I'm really gonna enjoy this. Today, my plan is to finish Road to Ruin by Hannah Lee. Like I said, this is my book club book for Patreon. And I started this um, when I was in Colorado. I went on vacation last week and I read like half of it. And then I was intending to finish the second half on the plane on the way back, but I was just so tired and my flight was delayed and we didn't get back until like super, super late at night. So I did not end up finishing it. So we're gonna do that right now. I'm really enjoying it. So basically this is, I keep saying it's like Mad Max because it takes place in this like desert wasteland apocalypse world and the main character rides a motorbike and she's like a, a courier from like all the different cities and there's also magic in this world like there's talented and talentless very much giving like the faction list <laughs> from divergent but basically some people are born with talent which is a magic and there's different types of magic and then there's people who aren't and they're talentless they're very much like outcasts and in society they're branded as talentless and they're not treated as well and all of the cities are in these like domes that protect them from the outside environment because the waste land has very crazy storms. It's very interesting because the world really reminds me of this old YA series called Under the Never Sky by Veronica Rossi that I loved. I was obsessed with and it's pretty much like the same world like very similar like desert wasteland crazy storms cities protected under domes so I'm really enjoying the world because it really reminds me of that but essentially the plot the main character Jin like I said she is a courier for years now she has been transporting letters back and forth from the prince of one city to the princess of another city they fell in love with each other, but they're not allowed to be together or speak to each other. So she secretly takes letters back and forth between the two of them. But in doing that, in helping them write all of these letters and take all these letters and stuff, she's fallen in love with both of them. So she's like, fuck, I'm in a dilemma. She's very much in like a bi panic, okay? At the start of the book, she's going to bring a letter to the princess. And when she gets there, the princess has been plotting this plan to escape her city because her city specifically is very like tyrannical and she's about to be married off and 
forced to like have babies and she would like rather die so she has come up with this plan that Jin is going to help her escape. So together they escape on her motorbike and they're headed to the city of the prince because his city is more like a sanctuary for people. But a bounty hunter is now coming after them to track them down and they get trapped in the wasteland in the storm and they're learning more about the wasteland. It's very, very action packed and interesting. And what's interesting too is at the end of every chapter is one of the letters that the prince and the princess were writing each other so the letters are from like years ago so we actually get every single one of their letters the first chapter ends with the first letter that they ever sent each other and then it keeps going so you see their correspondence and i'm enjoying that because so far we haven't even met the prince i've only heard from him in his letters but i like that i already kind of get a sense of who he is before i've even met him yet but the last part that i read um jen and the princess kissed and i was like Yes, I'm a simple lady. If girls are smooching in my book, I love it. It's amazing. It's a masterpiece. Okay, I just made this very big bowl of salad, but I'll give you guys that little reading update. Road to Ruin. Um, I'm still really enjoying it. I have like 50 pages left, so like things have happened a lot. Very, very fun. I love the main character. I just don't know that I'm really loving the romances. So it is a polyamorous romance. You have Prince and the Princess. They have been in love with each other. Then the main character, Jin, is in love with both of them. And then, what do you know, turns out they're both also in love with her. I thought I was going to be so here for it because I love polyamorous romances. And also the fact that it's FFM, I was very excited by it because usually you find it, it's like two guys and a girl. So I loved that it was two girls and a guy. I just don't know that I'm feeling it. Partially because I think it might be too short to really develop all of these different relationship dynamics. Not only do you have to sell me on the prince and the princess being in love, you have to sell me on Jin and the princess being in love and Jin and the prince being in love and then all three of them being in love as a triangle. It's just a, it's just a lot to do in what I think is kind of a short book. And also, I'm so sorry. I don't care about this man. I don't, I don't. Why is he here? It could just be the girls. This might be the problem with me and FFM is that will I ever care about the man? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. It doesn't help that I, the fact that we like literally don't meet him until the second half of the book besides his letters. So even by that point, I was already like, oh my god, I love the girls. And then he comes in and I'm like, I don't want him involved in this. I'm just, I don't know. He's not a bad character. He's actually very sweet. And I think outside of their romance, I would like him. Like as an individual character, he's fine. I'm just like... Let's get back to the girls kissing. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm going to see how it wraps up. I actually don't know if this is a standalone or a series. However, the way that it's going, I'm like, is 30 pages enough to wrap all this up? I don't think so. So I'm getting nervous that it might be a series and then it's going to end on a cliffhanger. I'm going to go finish the last 30 pages, eat my giant bowl of salad, and then we'll check in. I think I'm going to give this four stars. Here's the thing. Could I tell that it was a debut? Yes, there's definitely like things more on like a technical level that I think I would have changed or could have been improved But I think the plot was so fun the setup for the story in the world. I really enjoyed I really really loved the main character I think it's just the the other two characters honestly like the two royals the prince and the princess I just don't think that I, I, I ever like connected to them as much as I did the main character and it could partially be because I don't love the like naive royal trope where you have like this like royal or like wealthy character who's just so out of touch with like the world and the people and the problems but like I said I'm giving it four stars like just from pure entertainment I thought it was super fun and I'm definitely going to read the sequel to see where it goes I think if you enjoy Silver Under Nightfall by Ren Chepeko which I loved you could also enjoy this one plot wise completely different like plot setting writing all of that is different but i think the like relationship dynamics are very similar although i do think that in silver under nightfall they were way more developed and fleshed out 
that book is twice as long as this one, which I just, I do think this book was not nearly long enough to develop the relationships to the level that I personally would have liked, but I'm hoping to see them develop further in the sequel. Um, unfortunately, the fact that I could not get on board with the man did hinder my enjoyment a little bit, <laughs> but that's a personal problem. That's a me problem, okay? I was just distracted by the girls. So I don't know, I feel like if you're looking for a fast paced, very plot heavy, fun book with a really interesting setting, I definitely would recommend this one. And I'm hoping that some of the issues that I have with it are improved upon in the sequel. I'm about to start my book club discussion for Road to Ruin with my patrons. I'm very excited to discuss this because I think the majority of them really liked it. I'm sure it will be a great discussion. Um, I did just have to remind myself of all of the character names. I am so, so bad with remembering character names. That's like one of my biggest issues with reading is like the names don't stick in my brain at all. All right, it is time now to spin my sequels wheel and see which sequel I will be reading. Okay, I got well matched. It's perfect. That is perfect. For summer, it is a Ren Faire romance. So I got Well Matched by Jen DeLuca. This is the third book in the series, actually. I read Well Matched a very long time ago. I want to say like 2019, 2020, and I loved it. It was so fun and cute. And then the sequel, I hated. I really didn't like it. The sequel, which was called like Well Played, I think, had a catfishing element to it. And I just don't like that trope. Um, it always pisses me off and makes me feel icky. So then I kind of put the series down and like on the back burner a little bit. But I have heard that this book is a lot better than the second one. And I don't know, I'm feeling the Ren Faire vibes. I just remember loving book one so much. It was really so fun and I loved the setting. So this one says that it is a fake relationship that gives two friends more than they bargained for. Also, sorry if you can hear my little fan over here. It is so ungodly hot. I always need this thing with me. So yeah, I don't know. I'm hoping that this is giving me like those cozy, sweet romance vibes that I've been seeking more in romance lately. And I was really sad that I didn't like the second book because of how much I loved book one. And I think after this, there's one more book. Also, I haven't shown you guys this yet, but I have two desks now and I set them up in like an L shape because I offered my old desk to a bunch of people and nobody wanted it. <laughs> but this is the perfect setup now because whenever I sit at my desk, Loki wants to sit in my lap and it's just really hard for me to like work on my computer and have him in my lap. So now this is our setup and it's perfect. See? He just sits here with me now on the desk in, the, in like the corner and he can look out the window and sit with me. I think this is like the perfect solution. I read the first chapter of Well Matched and I do like it so far. Um, basically it's age gap where the woman is older than the man which I love. However, <laughs> he does have a nickname for her where he calls her Mama. I don't know how I feel about that. So um, we'll see, but basically they're gonna start fake dating because his family's like always begging him to like settle down. And he's like, oh, if I take this like respectable older woman who's a single mom home with me and pretend that she's my girlfriend, his parents will leave him alone. So yeah, I don't know. The setup is cute. I do like fake dating. Not sold on mama though. We'll see how that goes. So I finished Well Matched last night and I really loved it. It was so cute, it was so cute. It was exactly what I wanted. Um, I loved the main character, related to her a lot <laughs> because basically she is a single mom and she has been for a long time and she's kind of the type of person who's like, I don't need anybody, I can do everything for myself. She kind of keeps to herself, like she lives in this small town but she never really like participates in anything or has like, set down any roots and so now her daughter is getting ready to go off to college and she's like okay well it's time for me to get out of this town sell my house move somewhere else because there's nothing keeping me here and then mitch who is um her friend and he was from the first book he asks her to come with him to this family weekend that he's having to pretend to be his girlfriend because his family does not take him seriously and so he thinks that if he brings like this mature older woman who's very like 
successful that his family will take him seriously. And so, of course, one thing leads to another. Fake dating leads to it maybe not being fake. Um, and I have to say, Mitch, he's literally the Taylor Swift song mastermind. He's very much like, what if I told you none of it was accidental and nothing was gonna stop me? <laughs> I really really liked him. He's the type of character who like upon like first impression everybody kind of thinks he's like a himbo That he's just this like hot buff dumb guy, but he has a lot of layers. He has a lot of depth I will say my one thing that like keeps this from being five stars I'm giving it four stars. The one thing that keeps it from being five stars is that I was hoping it would be like Ren fair to the max because that's what I loved from the first book was like the whole Ren Faire setting. It was so much fun and that's what I was looking forward to was like getting back into the Ren Faire. However, there's very few scenes actually in the Ren Faire and it's only towards the end. So I was a little bit disappointed in that. I think if there had been more Ren Faire scenes, it could have maybe been a five star, but I'm gonna give it four. I really did enjoy it. I'm excited because the series has now been redeemed for me after the mistake that was book two. And now I'm excited to read the fourth book. Also, I do have to say, thankfully, he did not call her mama that much. He kind of dropped that very early, which I was thankful for because I was very afraid that when they had sex, he would call her mama during sex and that would just be it for me. <laughs> That would be too much. That would be too much. So thankfully he dropped that very early on. I need to pick another book and I am struggling. I've been standing here. Honestly, I've been standing here for way too long trying to figure out what I want to read next. And I don't know. This is the problem with doing an episode where I have no theme. Is it like I could pick anything, but I don't know what I want to pick. I don't know. Like what am I in the mood for? I could do like another romance. I have a bunch of romances down here. I think I'm kind of in the mood for a fantasy, but like nothing too crazy. So like maybe a cozy fantasy, which is what I have here. Oh my god, wait, you know what I actually do really want to read? It's actually not on this shelf, but it is part of my TBR, and that is The Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking. I have it over here with my whole T. King Fisher collection, but this is a cozy fantasy. I believe it's middle grade. You know, when in doubt, go with T. King Fisher. So it's about a 14 year old girl who is a wizard. Her magic is with baking. So she can like make magical breads and make gingerbread men come to life and stuff like that. And then a dead body is found in her bakery and she's accused of murder and then um, discovers a plot that someone is out there killing all the wizards. So her and her little baked goods have to um, save the day. <laughs> it just sounds so cute. And I don't know, baking feels summary to me maybe i don't know but this is definitely what i'm in the mood for and i always love t king fisher so i think i will enjoy it you get four stars you get four stars you get four stars and you get four stars everything is four stars <laughs> <laughs> so I finished A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking and I loved it. I thought it was so cute. It was so fun. I loved the magic system and how the main character could control all these little baked goods. It was just adorable. It's definitely on the cozy end of fantasy, but there are high stakes. Like there's a war going on. There's murder. It's more so like a cozy magic, but intense fantasy vibe. So I don't know that I would fully classify this as cozy fantasy, but I thought it was so fun and very typical T. King Fisher, silly, campy, a lot of humor. And I think this has reminded me that I think that right now in time, I like middle grade more than young adult. This one definitely straddles the line of being middle grade and young adult. But I think my biggest issue with young adult is that I don't want to read young adult romance. And I feel like almost every young adult book has like a romance shoehorned into it, even if it doesn't fit into the story at all. And so middle grade, you get these like fun young stories and no romance. And I like that. I really like that. So we have another win from my favorite author, T. King Fisher. And I'm so glad that I read this. Honestly, I'm kind of sad that it's not a series, that it's standalone, because I would read more about these characters. But that brings us to the end of this episode of TBR Tackle. And I've read four more books and we need to add these with all of the other books. And we are now ending this video with a total of 234 books left on my physical TBR. So we are making our way through. I've gotten through 16 already. So stay tuned for the next episode where I will be reading even more books. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe and check out my Patreon where I post tons of exclusive content. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. <laughs>